This is True North Story, the original podcast series. Learn, love, listen, live. Are you ready to discover your True North Story? With your hosts, Tama Fulton and John Hudson Masserol. We have a super exciting guest for you this week. <laughs> There's a little backstory that Tam and I need to share with you about this. I was actually involved, uh, cast rather, uh, to play a role in a film that was shot in Atlanta, Georgia, in and around in uh, 2012 about right. the life and times of Rich Mullins. And a key player in that is a musician named Mitch McVicker, who I got to meet on set and spend time with. And he was a really amazing guy, as was Rich Mullins. And so um, it's really interesting that I have been able to circle back with Mitch and get him on True North Story for Tama and I. Right. And he talks a little bit about his time at uh, college, Friends Correct. University, yes. and a man who was important in bringing Mitch and Rich Mullins together, which was the professor, right. Jim Smith, who was... Who, was who, who I was cast to play in the film, Ragamuffin. So uh, it's just, you know, Tam and I do not believe in coincidences, and this is amazing the way all of this circled back. He is a warrior for Christ. He is an amazing man, family man, husband, father, and amazing musician. So you get to hear his true North story now. Tell me you're closer than you have ever been. Cause I can't feel that now. I just feel alone again. No matter how close I get, the fear keeps crashing in. Show me your love is more than what's dangerous. Mitch, it's John yes. Messerall. How are you? Doing great, man. Happy Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday, Tama. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Hey, just real quick, I just want to kind of let folks know that the True North Story original podcast series is designed so that people can find inspiration and encouragement, motivation and hope through the journey of our guests in their own personal lives to find True North or find what works for them in whatever it is, if it's creatively as an artist or if it's professionally in the business world. And so we want to talk more about Mitch McVicker today because you have such an amazing life. And for those who don't know, obviously you were paired at some point earlier with Rich Mullins, the amazing contemporary Christian singer. And we can talk about that a little bit later in the podcast too, in your relationship with Rich and how that kind of drove and impacted your life. But we'd love to start with a little bit of your upbringing and kind of what that was like for you and where you grew up in Kansas and uh, your family life and just kind of the ABCs of Mitch to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up I grew up in the middle of everything in, in Kansas, not to say that there was a whole lot going on, but just say that geographically, it, that's the middle of things. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, it, was uh, it was a great basic upbringing. Middle America, kind of salt of the earth people that I grew up around. It was a rural agricultural community, though I did grow up in the capital city of Kansas. Even the cities kind of have that tinge in, in Kansas. And so I grew up, like most middle America kids, playing sports. My parents put me through some guitar lessons when I was 10, 12, something like that. And my my mom always made me uh, play songs in church, and um, I just I just kind of got tired of doing songs from books, so I started making up songs on my own, and that's kind of how the whole music thing started for me. I, I don't remember making a conscious decision to quote Christian music, but faith faith expression songs were, were just what came out of me when I when I started to write songs, and. Because faith is a big part of of how I approach life, and so that that was it. I continued to play sports 
through high school. I was a, I was a basketball player, and that's what took me to to college uh, to play to play basketball. And um, and music was always kind of a kind of a hobby, something I did for for fun. Just kind of strumming to the guitar and playing songs on my own. In college, I met I met Rich Mullins, whom you mentioned, and he had come back to school after a number of years, and we became friends and started hanging out. And that's kind of how I got into doing what I do now. <laughs> that is incredible. You know, it's super interesting because Tam and I have found or identified or, or listened to recurring themes within some of our guests on True North Story. And a couple of them are what you touched on a little bit is one, the parental involvement early on, whether they were, you know, huge fans and kind of helping support that move towards a a creative career or an athletic career or whatever, or parents who were not supportive and kind of how that impacted the journey a little bit. Were your parents super supportive of music and basketball and those types of things? Super supportive. They are, they're the biggest fans that I have. And I'm sure I wouldn't be uh, doing anything remotely close to what I'm doing now if it, if it wasn't for parents' involvement and investment in me and their their love and so I am ever grateful they were they were supportive of whatever I sought out to do that that made a huge impact on me and, and it continues to this day and I can see it also in uh, their interaction with my kids now that's so great. Mitch, did you have aspirations of either professional sports or professional music, or what did you want to do or think you wanted to do when you got to college? <laughs> well, I I went to school to to play basketball. To um, that's why I went to college. That's why I was interested in college. I wanted to play basketball for as long as I I could. And sure, when I was in high school, I, I was convinced I was gonna be able to play professionally. <laughs> right, as is, the next Larry as Bird. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think that should be your plan, your goal, if, if you're doing it. But uh, you know, I was probably duped by our society in general. That I just I it's kind of embarrassing to say, but I, I wanted to be famous. Um, for we have put that up on a pedestal that that's that's the you know that's the highest thing that you can achieve so i remember when i was i don't know 8th grade we'll say um i remember sitting down and trying to make the decision it's funny you mentioned larry bird <laughs> I, I i i made the decision of whether i wanted to be larry bird or brian adams and um, oh you wow know, and I was like, well, I, I'm going to go the basketball route. And, but, but I do know this, I want to be famous. And so I want to wow. be, um, I want to be good. I want to be, I want to be the best at something. And you know, that's a, um, fame is a, a fleeting thing. I mean, we know that it is a, uh, a fruitless chase, but that's, uh, you know, that, that got me, got me going. I, um, Played basketball for as long as I could, and then I happened to, happened to be um, decently okay at music, and and so I took that up uh, for my for my next step, and and you know you get disillusioned um, as you go about anything, as your dreams meet reality, and as they as they crumble and as they get altered, and uh, as they become different based upon uh, disappointments. And, and now, I, you know, now I know, now I know that, um, being famous is just a, it's a, it's a lie. It's a, it's a lie that, um, is a worthless chase, but I, uh, I'm getting to do something that, that I love and that, that um, hopefully people get, get something out of. You know, it's, it's amazing to hear you say that because, um, You know, I'm in my 40s and I'm still learning things and trying to strengthen my personal relationship with Christ. And and I know Tama is as well because it's never, ever a destination. It's never, ever where you want it to be. It's like, okay, now I arrived, you know, and I'm perfect. (laughs) We're we're these broken people that 
you know, are struggling through this experience called life to try and, you know, find meaning and, and love not only ourselves, but others as well and, and our Savior. And so I love to hear you talk like that because this world and, and that world are, are two very, very different animals, if you want to call it that. The mm-hmm. world values and what we as followers of Christ are here to reflect his image into mm-hmm. this world. So talk a little bit about the music. One thing I was going to say, one of our guests is Lloyd Buchanan, who is one of the background singers for the Alabama Shakes. And he is just an amazing guy, but he talked about singing in the church around a piano with his mom and with their family. You mentioned earlier about learning some music and and guitar and things in and around the church. Was that a big part of your youth as well? I'm sure it was. I mean, uh, everybody's faith seems to come down to a... uh kind of a crisis situation when it is heightened. But I, I do know that, that growing up in the church and having that background and, and being exposed to the scriptures and, and reading those, that that when things got hard in my life, I knew where to turn. I, I had that, that background that it might, it might have just been a knowledge of, of Jesus, a knowledge of God, uh, but I knew, I knew where to turn in, in times of hardship because of my um, upbringing, and eventually as, as you keep turning towards the Lord in the difficult times, because because we all go through more than one uh, crisis situation, maybe multiple times, eventually as you keep turning uh, towards the Lord, a uh, relationship develops. So I'm grateful that, that I had that backdrop and that was uh, there for me. It was a foundational thing for me. That's really powerful, Mitch. We all can relate to that, I think, because I I believe that we all are given moments of crisis to grow us and whether we turn to faith and what we believe or we don't makes a, a huge difference, I think, a turning point in our life, if you will. And if we lean into our faith and prayer and our knowledge of God and who he is and what his plans are for us, I think that we continue to grow and become more of what he wants for us. And we kind of call those comeback moments, I think. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Um, Do you feel like you've had some of those in your life that you could explain to us? Yeah. Well, the, the comeback moments, like I said, were probably multiple. Um, the the big one was uh, the car wreck that I was in with Rich Mullins that killed Rich, and I was severely hurt and laid up for a long time. I was in a, you know, the immediate stuff. I was in a, in a coma in the hospital for a long time, and I didn't know what was going to become of me. But but what I have learned as I have moved from from that point as I, as I have grown and become uh, from that point um, is that the the faithfulness of Jesus persists through our hard troubles struggles difficulties even when we have no sense of that even when we can't uh, mentally calculate things to where oh yeah well this this makes sense that God is faithful even when we're questioning, wondering, doubting all of that, that it persists. And it's not like I know anything about the faithfulness of God. It is vast and it's wide, you know. But I uh, I do kind of, I draw on the scripture when the psalmist says, uh, Lord, your faithfulness is more consistent, it's more constant than the rising of the sun. Well, I can, I can get with that. I've never known the sun not to rise. Sure, there's cloudy days, there's times we don't see the sun, but does that affect the fact, the fact that it has come up? The uh, you know, there's going to be hard, difficult stuff in our life that causes us to wonder on the faithfulness of the Lord. But does our perception change the fact that the faithfulness of the Lord uh, persists way beyond us? Yet we're included in it, and we're included by it. So I, I do know that the Lord will stop at nothing to uh, work on us, mold us, create us, turn us into who. Uh, God would have us become, and it seems like more often than not, uh, God uses that which we would never choose to go through on our own. So the uh, the hard stuff, like like you were saying, is is what seems to to make us who we are. So 
I have to rem- I have to remind myself of that constantly as certain difficulties come my way. Um, that okay, I'm I'm being made here. being made and continuing to be made even as we get older. I remember I always tell Tama, my dad always had a saying, the older he got, the less he knew he knew. And I'm mm-hmm. like, what are you talking about? You know, you're, you know, cause as a youngster, you think you know everything, right? And then all of a sudden, as you start getting older, you know, garnering wisdom comes from that, which you thought you knew that maybe you didn't know. And that's, uh, and being able to express that in a way and said, Hey, you know, I don't have all the answers. I don't know. I have a strong, pro- profound faith in Christ. And I think, to your point, when we go through those comeback moments or the struggles or the tribulations, that then we don't have the answers. That's where the faith gets stretched and strengthened. Because it, mm-hmm. what else do you have? I think of people, Tam and I talk about this all the time. I don't know how people go through terminal illnesses or tragic losses like car accidents, like losing rich. And how do you make sense of that when you have no relationship with the eternal, I I just can't really wrap my mind around that. How do you could you possibly deal with that? You know, knowing that there's not a divine plan, knowing that the plans I have for you. The Jeremiah verse. You know, Mitch, you talk about getting older and gaining wisdom and going through trials, but God put you through a big one in the car accident when you were a young man. And right. do you remember much about that particular day and time? You and Rich, were were you on the road doing concerts? Were you just hanging out together? What was the leading up to the accident? Do you remember? Right. Well, I I don't have a memory for six weeks prior to or six weeks after the wreck, but I do know. <sighs> Holy cow! I do know what we were doing, what we had been doing. We had been spending four weeks. We were actually working on my first record. Rich was producing it. Um, we were working at a studio and. In Chicago, we were leaving that night. We, you know, we had just kind of finished up the recording, though there was a few odds and ends to still needed to be finished up. And we were driving to do a, a Rich Mullins concert in Kansas, and driving through the night to to get there. And that's when the the wreck happened. Wow! So I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know any of the details other than what I've been told. <laughs> so what was that like? I mean, obviously, it's amazing the relationship that you developed with Rich. I mean, I know you mentioned him coming to college and your life arcs kind of crossing. What what was it that led you to to develop this relationship beyond just being fellow students? You know, I'm not I'm not for positive. I do know that we met in a class. James Ryan Smith was our instructor and by the way mitch you do remember that in the rich mullins film i was cast as that character in the film in that in that while that's just so funny you just brought that up but anyway i'm so so go ahead sorry (laughs) um we we met in a class which i think is one of the scenes that that was shot in the in the movie and we met in jim's class and and rich was was friends with Jim, so that's why he was taking the, the class. And I it was part of my course of study. I was a religion and philosophy major, and we just became friends. Um, you know, Rich lived in in Jim's attic, so they were real close. And for some reason, I'm not sure why, uh, Rich asked Jim if, if uh, when we broke down into small groups, if he could be in a small group with me. And um, I think he was probably just. You know, because Rich talked all the time, and I think he was probably in, interested or attracted to my, my. I, I didn't. I hardly ever talked, and I think that's probably why he wanted to, wanted to be around me. I'm, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> True North story. Learn, love, listen, live. 
And now, back to the program. Mitch, you know, I don't know you personally, but I can guess that you have a very tall stature (laughs) and that you are thoughtful and quiet. And when you do speak, it is so profound and wise. It carries weight. Yes. Everyone is like, who is this guy? If I were rich, that would be the impression I'd have. Well, that's nice for me to say, and, and, and Rich, we, I, I do know that we, we became friends, and we got, to, we got to hang out, and it was a good year or so before it ever came up that I was, had any kind of musical inclinations. We were just hang out friends. <laughs> that is awesome. Tam and I, I don't believe in coincidences. She doesn't believe in coincidences. I mean, we believe in divinely inspired, nothing is wasted kind of thing. So obviously there was a trajectory in God's plan to bring you and Rich together for whatever reason. And we may or may not know the answers to that. And you may have struggled to find the answers to that, you know, after Rich returned home. What has that journey kind of been like for you? Because obviously, you know, you're committed to the music. I mean, Rich was pretty famous guy in his own right. You mentioned struggling with fame and being in the music business and being as a Christ follower in the music business. How has that been for you going forward, Mitch? Well, it is. Um, I know that was one thing just in talking with Rich and being around. We, we were roommates for three years, so so uh, I, I know that that was a, a struggle that he dealt with constantly. And the the movie that we've mentioned that, that was made about Rich Mullen, um he deals with that a lot, his struggle with wanting to be good and wanting to be whatever came with that fame and then realizing that that's just a, a ludicrous chase and that's not, not something that, that he is consistent with living in the kingdom of God. So that's that's been this, what I found out uh, is that being popular, having other people speak well of you is something that, that Jesus even even warns us about. And so I go, my goodness, you know, I'm, I'm in a um, vocation here that, that, uh, that wants to connect with people and wants people to like me. <laughs> right. And, um, and that seems to be uh, not, not congruent with living in the kingdom of God, but it's all about perspective. Uh, and it's all about why you're doing what you're doing. Um, you know, I, there's there's no reason to try and dress up salvation, try and dress up uh, God's invitation to us. So it's going to be attractive to people. So um, if they if they end up um, liking what I'm doing, even liking me so as a byproduct, fine. Uh, but I'm going to be faithful to how God is is working in me and um, and try and do some quality art, try and try and do some. Uh, quality music that that gives people hope, gives them something of substance to hang on to. If that's something that, that people are attracted to, wonderful. Um, you know that's that's why I, that's why I do it. If you make if you make up songs, you want people to listen to them and like them. <laughs> so it, it's all about perspective and um, remembering uh, why I'm doing it, the proper approach in in, in going about doing it. John and I talk about. It's important to know who you are, and it's mm-hmm. important to know your why. And so right. when you can remain authentic, knowing that you're Mitch, at the end of the day, you're Mitch, and you're a broken person, just like Tama is a broken person, and John's a broken person, and we have an amazing Savior that values us regardless of how we feel about ourselves as long as we are thinking of Jesus first, others second, and ourselves last, and doing what we feel God's put us on this earth to do, I think we're doing it right. I don't know. What do you think, Mitch? That That's right. And, and wait a second. You two are broken? I don't even, <laughs> I'm not even sure. What, I thought you had it all together. That's, that's why. Right. Far from it. You know, me. that's the big mystery, right? When I'm, you, <laughs> Mitch, I'm... I'm still trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. It's like you get you go, God, what do you what do you want? What everything lines up. You think it's totally perfect. You think and it's amazing. I just want to throw that in there because I never if you don't have faith, 
How do you deal with something like that? That's a crushing defeat. It's like, okay, now what, God? <laughs> right. It's just amazing to me that we get to do this podcast and we get to talk to people like you, Mitch, that have such profound impact on people musically, spiritually. You know, you've got a wonderful wife who facilitated all this, Paula. I mean, amazing. And a couple of beautiful children. Tell us a little bit about the father, the dad, Mitch. Like what, you know, family man, when you're not on the road playing for well, all your fans and in, in well, the studio. They, uh, they make me more and more me. I am... I'm grateful for for my my family. Um, my kids are wonderful teachers. Um, I'm grateful to to go through the journey of life with with my wife. I've learned so much from from my kids. My goodness, it's the little things I, that I've I've learned are important. It's my my son's sixth birthday was yesterday, and so one of the things he wanted was a pogo stick. <laughs> and he, um, yeah, it's, it's is he gonna, cool, is he gonna be yeah. tall like you? Is he gonna be, you know, living above the rim? <laughs> <laughs> so he's the tallest kid in his class right now. Wow! So who knows what he will become? Uh, but he's he's just a kindergartner, and I was I was just thrilled that he wanted a pogo stick, which is kind of like a 1950s toy, <laughs> right? Right. And uh, but it's better than just being yeah, like a gaming with, system, right? Very, Sit downstairs very, on his playing yeah. games all day. The the screen the screen time is such a uh, draw for these kids and, and, and affecting them so so much. And I'm not I'm not even a well I am I I would say I'm an old fart um, <laughs> probably, but it, it has a lot of it has a lot of good, but it has right. like anything it can it can have a lot of bad as well. Anyway, he was. He wanted to try the pogo stick, and, and um, you know he got up. He got up to doing, you know, not many, four or five jumps, and and it was just a, it was such a process that he would, <laughs> he would get he would get frustrated. He would get frustrated and want to want to quit, but then he couldn't he couldn't walk away from it. And it, it, it was just such a a good uh, lesson for me. How how many times do we uh, get frustrated with whatever we may be doing, and and if you're like me, you feel like uh, walking away from it often. Um, yet, oh, I can imagine. Yet, yeah. Yet I can't. I can't um, because uh, you hold on to the underlying uh, motivation, being becoming, you're being worked on and made into you, into into becoming the the person that God wants you to be um, through whatever we may do. Whatever corner we go around, do you know? Just living life, uh, mowing the lawn, doing the dishes, um, teaching a class, plumbing a sink, going to the grocery store. You know, you just reminded me. You just reminded me, Mitch, of a lyric from your song. You know, when you said every uh-huh. corner that we go around, that's one of my favorite, absolute favorite songs of yours. Oh, thank you. Oh, I love that song, "My Salvation." There's so many, and we'll we'll mix we'll mix you know music in. But what is your favorite album? that you've done so far, I mean, or, or favorite song or, you know, just kind of from your perspective. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That is, that is a really hard question to answer because, you know, if you invest yourself in a song or in in an entire record, you know, you like, you like all of it. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Otherwise you wouldn't do it in the first place. Right. You'd be like, no, we got to record another song. Right. I can't, I can't pick, favorites uh there there are certain songs that uh really resonate with me at a certain time danger that's a song is three or four years old now but i uh, i've been playing it a lot in concert as of late because it's it's kind of a true uh it's true for I, me I, in my, my my approach to life is that uh there's so many things in this life that are dangerous and so many times and we can't feel god and god's involvement in our life but we need to somehow, somehow break through that and, and, and trust that in the midst of the dangerous stuff, which which God is greater than, even though it may not make sense all the time, um, the, the God is God is there, and somehow God can you remind me of that? <laughs> you know that lyric about you're the tune I whistle, or what? I, I'm I'm paraphrasing when I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. I mean that just really speaks to me. 
because it's like, it's okay to be afraid. We live in a very dangerous and scary world, but we have a really mighty, amazing Savior who, you know, right. promises not to harm us and to care for us and loves us more than we're capable of loving ourselves. So I just always juxtapose that line. I'm like, yes, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm afraid, but you know what? I have, I have this tune. I have this spirit inside of me that, that is there that I can rely on. That's just really powerful. Well, that, that line is in, in the song that you mentioned earlier about uh, the song, My Salvation. That line was drawn from a book that I was reading by Frederick Buechner, where he says, faith is like whistling in the dark. And, and that always resonated with me, uh, because you know, you know how when you're walking through the dark and you're kind of, you're, you're scared, uh, but you just, you just start whistling to try and put yourself at ease and, and, right. and know that it, know that it's going to work out. And, and that's kind of what, what faith is uh, for me, it, it's um, our walk is often scary. And this salvation that I'm holding on to, this invitation from God, is uh, very much just whistling in the dark. <laughs> Hey, Mitch, what do you have on your plate that's coming up for you? I know the holidays are here, so I'm sure you're going to be spending time with family and friends. But what's uh, 2017 look like for Mitch? Well, gosh, you know, what's next for me is getting to be around my family during the, the Christmas time, during the holiday time. And that's, you know, that is something that with my kids being 6 and 11, um, that's what else is bigger in a, in a kid's life than that? So I'm I'm grateful to get to be here. I don't, and get I, I don't know, Mitch. Maybe watching Dad on the pogo stick that might be pretty you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> around yeah, the Christmas tree. That might be <laughs> that might be pretty pretty entertaining. That could be, end up with being one of those crisis situations, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. or a YouTube video, <laughs> or both. No, I'm kidding. Um, 2017, well, full spring tour that I'll be doing, and then in the summer, I am. You know, hopefully going to going to record another record and then and in the fall do another tour. And um, are there ways people can be involved or help you with the next record at all, Mitch? I know you've used Kickstarter yeah. and some things in the past. So yeah, the past the past couple of records have both been uh, crowdfunded, and which makes sense to me these days. You know, I've been with four or five different record companies and. Um, and I and I decided that it was just better to do it on my own. You know, it's the it's the one thing if you want to be famous, well, it's, it's not the right approach um, because you you don't have the marketing machinery behind you. That, uh, that, oh sure, that, sure. That's going to get get your name out there that the, that the record companies have. But um, yeah, they've been crowdfunded, and there's been no tangible plans as of yet. There's nothing on Kickstarter, uh, but I'm pretty sure that will be the the approach once again because um, I, I like to like to uh, involve those people that have been so supportive uh, of what I'm what I'm doing. Uh, it, it makes sense to me that, that we we kind of do it together, and so when when it happens, like I said, hopefully it'll happen soon. That will be the approach. Fantastic. Well, we'll certainly um, put your website and we'll put some links to your music where they, where people can get it. We have Amazon links on our blog page so we can link it to some of your albums and to your website and help in any yeah. way that we can, for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's great. It's amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's exciting. It's been wonderful to reconnect with you, John, and Absolutely. Good, to, good to connect with you, Tamara. And it's been, been wonderful talking with you been a great conversation, Mitch, and we just wish you and your family a wonderful Christmas and 
a very happy 2017 that God will just bless and continue to make us, right? As we move forward. Amen. That is right. Faith, that's the thing for me, is faith has ended up just being moving forward, uh, to to continue to to move forward. And um, and so that with the expectancy um, for what God will be doing. Amen. That's powerful. That's, That's a powerful. beautiful prayer. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mitch. We so appreciate it. Well, thank you both very much. Yes, I've come to the desert just to find my way to forever. And you are so welcome here if you're ever in New Mexico. Thank you for listening to True North Story, the series. Until